Hello, my name is Victor Oeman, and in this video I'll be going over the all new Quixel Mixer, which is out now, and all of its features. It's a step by step primer which is 100% beginner friendly. When you first launch the mixer, you'll be prompted with this paths dialog, asking you to specify where you want to save your mixer files and where your local Megascans directory is located. Hit OK, and you'll be asked to log in using your Megascans account. And here is the mix manager in which you can create and load projects and mixes. To the left are the projects, and if you select one, you'll see its associated mixes. The sample mixes shown in this project are bundled with the mixer to help new users learn about all its features and the varying complexity. Once a project is selected to the left, hit the plus icon in the top right corner to create a new mix. Here you can specify the name, the resolution you want to work in, and the PBR workflow you want to use. Let's maximize the window. Here is the mixer's viewport, the view tabs, the layers, and the menus. Let's go through all of them. By going to File and New, you're able to add a new mix to your current project. Under Open, you can load a previously created mix, and Save lets you save what you're currently working on, and Save As lets you save as a new mix. Export to Library allows you to save your project as a material that will get added to the Megascans library, which will also be accessible to load into the current and future Mixer projects as a new layer. Under Edit Preferences, you can edit the paths you set up when you first launch the Mixer, and you can view the system information. If you go to Library, you get the option to import Megascans assets either by specifying a folder or a zip archive. Here you can also import a custom material that you created for use in the Mixer. There are also options to download all your previously acquired assets, and to reload the library at any time. Under Help, you can check out the About section of the mixer, activate or change the current license, or check for updates. Here you can enable or disable checking for updates when launching the mixer. Regenerate Normals is an experimental feature that allows you to regenerate the normals for the project at any time. As you can see in the top left corner here, we're currently in the viewport. You can change the preview mode from this dropdown, or by using the number keys on your keyboard. Right of that you can toggle displacement on or off, or you can use the hotkey D, as in displacement. Next up is the tiling preview, which lets you instantly preview how your surface tiles. The hotkey for this is T, as in tiling. To the top right of the viewport, you can change the lighting environment. You can toggle between these using the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard. Let's take a look at how to navigate the 3D space. You use Alt left to orbit, Alt right mouse button to zoom, Alt middle mouse button to pan, and the scroll wheel to zoom in increments. In the settings tab to the right of layers, you can specify which resolution you want to work at. This can be changed at any time, and you can also at any time change the PBR workflow. Under display you get the access to a number of display options. Under background you can specify if you want a gradient, flat color or the skybox as a backdrop. If you choose skybox you get the option of blurring it. You can also increase or decrease the lighting intensity and the light rotation. You can also rotate the light by using shift and right mouse button in the viewport. Next you can specify the shadow resolution and the camera's field of view. At the bottom you can specify the tessellation resolution, if you want to render polygon backfaces, and if you want anti-aliasing enabled or not. If we move on to performance, you can toggle tweaking downsample, which temporarily, while you make edits, lowers the texture resolution. High quality blur makes softer blends look nicer, and fast paint preview lets you finish your brush strokes before the changes are applied, improving the performance. In the Export tab, you get access to the powerful export features of the mixer. Here you can specify the exported mix's naming, location, folder structure, resolution, and format. In the bottom part, you get granular control over the individual maps such as name, format, bit depth, etc. If you specify EXR as a format, you can only export as a 32 bit. And if we set it to be RGBA, we get access to an additional channel in which we can save information. This allows for very powerful optimization such as RMA packing and so on. You can add or remove maps just as you'd like, and if you want to revert to the default values, simply choose that preset from the preset menu. 
You can click add map at the bottom to add a new map. Once you're happy with your export settings, simply hit export maps at the bottom and they'll be exported to the specified location. Let's take a look at the next workspace, the local library. This is where all your downloaded and custom materials are located. You can change the thumbnail size in the top right corner and you can search for specific materials using the search bar to the left. By using the category dropdown, you can change the top level category you're browsing in. The subcategories will change accordingly and it's dependent on the local content. You can sort the content by date, material type, color hue and brightness. And as you can see, the categories follow the same sorting. Let's move on to the online workspace. Here you get access to the entire Megascans online library, right in the mixer. You can change the thumbnail size here as well. And just as in the local library, you can search, sort and navigate the same way. The search results depend on what top level category you choose, such as surface, brush or atlas. Here you can see the concrete results in the atlas category. If we remove the search query, we can view all the atlases available in the library. Here I'm searching for potholes. If I go into metal while in the atlas top category, I'll only see atlases featuring metal elements. But if I change it to surfaces, the results will only be metal surfaces. And if I set it to all types, I'll see all metals in the entire library. In the viewport, there are just a couple more things I want to show you before we create the first surface. You can press F as in focus to focus on the surface, and if you press Ctrl F, it resets the camera to its default location. With the plane layer selected, we can specify the dimensions of the surface area. Let's go ahead and add our first surface from the local library. Simply click on the surface to add it. And there we go, it's added to the layer stack. Here you can toggle its visibility by clicking the eye, and you can rename it by double clicking its name. You can control its high and low frequency detail intensity by dragging the sliders. The threshold slider shifts the balance between the small and large details, and by clicking the round arrow icon you can reset to its default values. You can also adjust the individual reflectance values by clicking the colored circles. This opens up the color swatch. And the mixer ships with a wide library of preset material values which you can easily access from here. You can also save your own. Next up you can control the material offset in both axes and its rotation in 90 degree increments. With the repetition slider you can control how much to tile the material. The mixer will automatically default to its correct repetition and will notify you if it deviates. Below you can view the dimensions of the surface and by clicking view online you can easily locate it in the online library where you can download a higher resolution, more maps, etc. Let's go ahead and add another surface to blend with the current one. The blend is already pretty nice, but let's tweak it. Threshold specifies how much to blend, radius how tight the blending is, and preserve details control how much of the details to preserve of the current layer. The range of the sliders can be increased by manually inputting a higher value. Opacity controls the layer's opacity in a linear range from 0 to 1. Wrap to base lets you wrap the current layer to the underlying shapes, and remove base details softens the underlying shapes. The high and low frequency sliders and the threshold slider controls the intensity and balance of the details. By loading the reflectance preset we previously created, the current layer will get the same values and blend perfectly with the underlying one. What I want to do now is to break up the surface, and a great way to do that is to use real-world erosion data instead of using procedural noise. So let's isolate the current layer. Next, I'll load a new material with some interesting shapes, regardless of the actual material type, like this concrete. The reason why this material repeats so much is because it's a small detail scan. I'll lower the repetitions to get it real large and chunky. I'll use the same reflectance preset for this as well. Next, I'll find a good threshold and set the blend to from above. This works sort of like a boolean. I'll just adjust the blend values a bit to find a good spot. There we go. This affects both layers, which is not quite what I'm after, so what I'll do is I'll hold down ALT and click between this and the underlying layer. 
This will make it so that it only affects that layer. Next, I want to add an atlas surface by clicking this button here. I don't have any downloaded though, so let's grab one from the online library. I'll search for decal. This one will do very nicely. I'll review the download settings and download it. There we go. We can follow the status here in the grid view. Once it's downloaded, I can drag drop it from the library to where I want it in the layer stack. Now this atlas can be accessed from the local library as well. I think it's looking really nice, but I want to ground it a bit better. I'll tweak the blend values a bit. I will also tweak the wrap to base value so that it retains a bit more of its own shapes. There we go. Next, I'll add a solid layer. I'll use this to make the mud look more packed and moist. And once again, I'll use the reflectance preset that I saved. I'll find a good threshold value and change the blend to from above. By increasing the radius, the blend will be softer. I'll tweak the blending value so I find a good spot that I like. A wonderful thing about the mixer is that it's completely non-destructive, so you can go back at any time and change values. I think we're getting there. It's really starting to look more dense and compact now. To add more moisture to the surface, I'll add a liquid layer. I'll use this to control the moisture and reflectance values. I'm not looking to add puddles just yet. The liquid layer accumulates in the low parts and you can control the moisture fall off in those areas. I'll continue tweaking these values, but I think I'll need to go back and adjust the solid layer a little bit. This is where the non-destructive nature of the mixer really shines. There we go. So what I want is for the water to barely show in the lowest parts of the surface. And I think this looks really good. I'll add another liquid layer to add in some actual puddles. I'll adjust the surface and the depth, among other parameters, to find a good look. I want it to look really milky and muddy. I think the color of the water needs to match that of the mud a bit more. There we go. Now we're getting there. That's looking super nice. Let's go ahead and make it even chunkier. I'll add a displacement layer, which uses a procedural noise to affect the displacement of the surface. You can adjust the noise's amplitude, frequency, octaves, lacunarity, and persistence. I will lower the amplitude a bit and then clamp its values. And finally, I'll reduce the clamp's influence. Perfect. However, the puddles aren't flat. They follow the underlying displacement, which we don't want. To fix this, all I have to do is to drag drop the displacement layer below the liquids. And there we go. The last layer type is a paint layer. This is probably the most fun and powerful kind of layer in the mixer. It allows you to paint in all the different channels, either individually or in multiple at the same time. You can use both the brush and eraser, and their hotkeys are B and E respectively. The brush size is adjusted via the size slider or by holding down B and middle mouse button dragging. You can also adjust the opacity and flow. Below that you get the brush shape controls. If you're familiar with Photoshop, you'll feel right at home here. You can adjust the shape tip, the curve of it, and you can also load your custom brushes. Next, you can control the intensity of the different color values, or you can load and save presets. Let's use the one we made. You can also control the displacement influence. Below that, you can control the direction of the displacement, up, down, or plateau. You can change the direction by holding control when painting. 
You can control the paint layer's opacity by using the opacity slider after you've painted. You also get control over the individual channel's parameters by clicking on them. You can load custom images or clear the data per layer, for example. Here I'm boosting the displacement intensity. And now I'm clearing the paint data from the albedo, metalness and gloss. By selecting the albedo and gloss layers individually, I can paint only on those two layers. By increasing the gloss value and lowering the albedo value slightly, I can manually add some more reflectance to the surface. To select multiple layers, hold shift while clicking on them. Let's remove the changes I made by clicking the clear buttons on the layers. You can also edit the displacement layer individually, which is incredibly handy in many scenarios. I'm getting really happy with this. Let's preview how it tiles by pressing T on the keyboard. Everything you paint in the mixer automatically tiles, so if you paint outside the borders, it will loop over to the other side of the surface automatically. Let's save the mix. I'll go ahead and save this as a surface so that I can easily reuse this in future projects. I'll set a name, choose a category, set the resolution, and I'll add a tag so that I can more easily find it. And hit save. There we go! Now it's saved and we can see it here in the local library, both in the mixer and the bridge. I'll go ahead and export this for Toolbag 3 so that we can create a nice turntable presentation of the material. I'll set a name, specify the location and review the export settings. I'll uncheck Invert Y in the normal map. I'll also uncheck Normalize in the displacement. That looks good, so let's save this as a preset. I'll call it My Toolbag 3 Export. Next, hit export. Let's take a look at them review the textures before hopping into Toolbag 3. We have the albedo, AO, displacement, normal, and roughness, and they all look good. Let's open Toolbag 3 and the Quixel Sphere scene, which is available for download in the description of this video. I'll drag drop the textures into their corresponding slots. And there we go! Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you learned something from this tutorial. The mixer is out now, and we can't wait to see what you create with it. Keep your eyes peeled for future videos and live streams, and make sure to hit subscribe and the bell icon below this video. This is Victor Oeman, and I'll see you next time!